Hi, it's British Cook, and here I am about to show you how to make bread with a bread maker. Not really, I'm going to show you how to make this delicious, crunchy, awesome bread. I really wish you could smell this. It's so good. Baking, baking bread, sounds pretty hard. It's so easy, trust me. If I can do it, you can definitely do it. I'm going to be showing you a couple of little extra trip, uh, tips and also methods which I use as well to make sure this comes out absolutely brilliantly. So please just keep watching and uh, enjoy. Three simple steps, three simple ingredients and three special tips. As always, I'll be doing the measurements um, for the recipe in cups and in grams and in pounds and ounces. Uh, check the link below and that's where the information will be. So the first ingredient is flour. You can use plain flour or bread flour for this. So three cups of flour. Just roughly level them off. So three cups of flour, which is just over 400 grams, about 420 grams of flour for this. Ingredient number two is yeast. I've got about half a teaspoon of yeast here, which is about three and a half grams, half a sachet of instant yeast. And that goes. Tip number one, and this is where it gets a little bit cheeky. Um, this is activated yeast. It doesn't actually need sugar, but me being me, I tend to put in normally about a, a teaspoon, a flat teaspoon of sugar into there. So as soon as I start mixing together, the uh, yeast really does react quite quickly. So I'm going to give this a quick mix on its own before we add any other ingredients. Just mix the dry ingredients a little bit. This is going to go up like a volcano when, um, when you see what happens. It's really, really good. The next ingredient is salt. Salt varies a lot, um, the sort of salt you're using. I tend to use really basic table salt. Um, the reason being it mixes much better and gives more uniform taste. I'm going to give that a little mix in as well. Okay, so here comes the fun bit. I'm going to put this into a bigger bowl, because obviously I've been weighing things. Okay, water. This is really, really important. The water needs to be a lot hotter than you normally think it would need to be for bread. What we're actually going to be doing is using 125 millimetres, which is half a cup, half a British cup or European cup, of boiling water. Just come off the boil. So literally boil the kettle and pour that in. So 125 millimetres of boiling water and 250 millimetres, which is a full cup of cold water. That brings the perfect temperature to this recipe. So you want one and a half cups of water and if you fill the, hot, the half cup with boiling water and then the 250 ml full size cup with cold water, you have the perfect sort of temperature. So I'm going to pour it in a minute. So this is he pours it halfway all over the floor. It's alright isn't it? Doesn't that look beautiful? mix it together, it will form quite a strange sort of dough um, but what you're looking for really is consistency so it's actually quite hard to work, not hard but it's firm to work ok that's pretty much it so you can see it's pulling the flour off the side it's damp and that's perfect, that's just where we want it how easy was that? a few stirs of spoon it's all done so all we're going to do now is cover with the cling film and you need to put it somewhere really quite warm to proof. Um, we've got an airing cupboard that's actually turned on, somewhere nice and warm and what we're going to do is let that prove now for, um, it, you can prove it within about an hour and a half. Uh, personally I prefer to leave it for three hours, I think it develops a little bit of a different texture and a bit more of a taste. So I'm going to leave it somewhere warm now to prove. So, this is the moment when you decide not to make a mug or cup of coffee, but a whole saucepan full of it. In goes the sugar. Should be a tasty coffee.
Okay, so what I'm saying is you need one of these anywhere, you can get them uh, it's a metallic um, Dutch oven, casserole dish. Uh, this one's been very well used, unfortunately, or not unfortunately, it gets used all the time, which is why it's in a little bit of a state. <coughs> the reason you need something metallic is because it's going to the oven at 235 degrees Celsius minimum, um, it's going to be sat for quite a while, because only plastic, any um, metal coated, whatever's underneath will probably melt. So make sure whatever you've got is resistant to heat, okay? Okay, so the bread's been proving. Um, I think I've left it there for about three and a half hours. As I said, anything between about an hour and a half to three hours would be awesome. Um, you don't need to leave it much longer at all. So it's pretty much tripled in size. Looks really, really good. Some nice bubbles there, a bit of aeration. Take that all off for a sec. I do. So what I've done behind it is I've laid some um, cling film down. The reason I do that is because I'm lazy. Uh, to be honest with you, it's easier for me to put flour on this. I suggest you try this at home. So much for quicker cleanup. So put the flour on the cling film. Then what you've got is a surface you can literally pull the edges off, fold over, without having to mix water and flour, which is never a great idea. So look at this. Absolutely lovely. I don't know if you can see the, um, the texture of that. It's going to be really great. Pop this out. Get those little bits out in a moment. So what you've got, lovely piece of dough for bread here. So I'm going to call it really easy bread because it's ridiculously easy. So what you're doing is flatten the bread down and just pull it and fold it over. Flatten the bread down, pull it out that way and fold it over. What you're doing is you're getting the air into the bread so you pop it in for a second time to brew. Pull it out, flip it over. Do that about seven or eight times. Really not a lot, certainly not needing in the, in the traditional sense, just literally pulling out and fold it over. So you fold it over seven or eight times, make it into a shape. But hang on a second, I said three tips, didn't I? So tip number three, possibly not a great time to be doing this, but this is how I'm gonna do it, olive oil. Good tablespoon of decent olive oil. The taste makes it really, really good and makes it lovely and crisp on the outside. So that's what I'm gonna do. This is tip number three. If you want to use it, you can. I'm gonna chuck this back in here and put a glug of oil in there and give it a roll around. Quick little sprinkle of a little bit more flour on top. Just a little bit, roll it in, there we go, let's see if you can see that in a minute, oh. at the V, so what we've got here is without a tip number three, which is with all of all, so just scrape it all around, get all that goodness in there. This is why I can't really call it no need bread because um, I suppose at this point needing a little bit. Right, so the olive oil's in there, that's in there, on to the next part. So into your bowl a piece of grease proof paper, pop that in there. What you need to do is turn your main oven on, the one which you're gonna be cooking in, uh, to 235 degrees Celsius, which is around about 450, 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Turn the oven on. As soon as you turn your oven on, you need to grab your Dutch oven, your casserole pot, and just pop it in there. So as soon as you start heating the oven up, get that in there. That's really, really essential. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I've got the grease proof paper in there. I'm going to cover it with a damp tea towel. Stick this somewhere warm for about 35 minutes. And this is going to make such a big difference to the outcome of the bread. Um, it really does. Excuse the hands free, so I want to show you how much this has risen. Look at that. 
There's big air bubbles all the way through it. The olive oil. It's going to be awesome. Okay, so the oven's been on now for about 40 minutes for the casserole dish preheating inside it. So what I'm going to do is uh, get it out and as quick as I can get this lovely looking dough inside it. The casserole dish is going to be ridiculous hot when you pull it out. Back to change colour. Absolutely scorching that is. So what we're going to do, take the lid off. Might be a bit of smoke. Going to then lift this into here. Awesome. Okay. And then time for the secret weapon. I give this one for free. It'll chuck some ice down inside of it. it creates a steam. Get that top on as quick as you can. Then chuck it in the oven. Be really careful when you're handling this because those uh, metal dishes get pretty hot. So there it is in the oven. The magic's happening right now. You need to leave it in the oven, heated at 235 degrees Celsius, with a lid on, for around about 30 minutes. So if you leave it for 30 minutes, and then we're going to take it out. And then the world's quickest cleanup. Check this out. So much easier than trying to wipe something down with water and just end up making dough everywhere. So simple, so quick. You know, great. Done. Okay, it's been for about 30 minutes. What I do is lift it out a minute. Take the top off. Okay, we're looking pretty good. We're nowhere near finished yet. Need to get this out. So take it off a second. Tend to use a paper to not really keep heat. Pop this one in cold water somewhere, or somewhere safe left in heat. This one, move it across. What we do now, unwrap this little beauty. It's not quite finished, you can see. It's got a shape and size though, look at the bottom of that. Get rid of that grease with paper, and we're gonna chuck it back in the oven for about 15 minutes, same heat. Okay, 15 minutes are up. Let's see what's going on down here. Bear me a second, doing something a little bit naughty. There we go. <laughs> How does that look? That looks pretty, pretty good, doesn't it? Turn the oven off a second. That is going to be so tasty. Quite a lump as well. Quite a decent size. The things I do for you. I really wish you could smell this. It smells so, so good. Best smell in the world is freshly baked bread. The hardest thing about this now is waiting for it to cool down. It's going to be so good. I'm going to be trying it with some of my butter, which is a different video which I did, and also eating it with some of my honey roast ham. Oh, listen to that. Bliss. Crunchy on the outside. Lovely and light on the inside. I'm really looking forward to this. What do you think? Pretty good, eh? The crust on the bottom and the top is nice and thick and crunchy. And this, so soft and tender. Lovely. Nice big air holes all the way through it. Looking really good. So, what goes with bread? Butter. Made some delicious homemade butter earlier today. There's another video on that. Ham. Lovely ham. Homemade ham. Cheese. I didn't make that, let's be honest. I didn't make this either. However, what I'm going to do is really, really enjoy taking some of this butter that I made a couple of hours ago and spreading it on my delicious, warm, hot bread here. Yeah. 
you know, I'm still here, and there's one thing which I know I've nearly forgotten, but I haven't quite. Homemade chutney. Look at that. Okay, might not look great underneath that angle, but it tastes really, really good. Homemade chutney, homemade butter, homemade bread, homemade ham. This is the way forward.